Today's podcast is brought to you by our friends over at Smart Deploy, modern endpoint solutions for the hybrid workplace. You can go to smartdeploy.com slash FRD for a free offer with 570 bones or dollars. Oh, and there's half a, half a throat. I'm in there somewhere. What, there's why? there's a full throat. <laughs> Get your... What side is the camera on? Here we go. Well, good news, Brad. Yes. Or bad news, depending on your perspective. I just tested negative for COVID again. Mm, that is bad news. So I, I got think. I got that going for me. Yes, you do. Where yeah. where are you right this now? Is, You're in Central Park in New York. So City? I'm in a, I just forgot the name of the park. I'm in a park that's right next to uh, Be- uh, I call it Bellas Artes. It's probably Bellas Artes, I guess, which is inarguably the most beautiful building. I'll bring you around the front, but let's see if I can do a little turn around here. Let's see what that oh, looks yes, like. It is. It's very nice. Very uh, very Paris like, I would say. Yes, I was I was about this to say. This is also. Parisian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, actually, here while I'm here, see if I can handle this a little bit of geometry. There you go. Nope. A little, <laughs> little new. Come on, the old... There it is. Yeah, the old tower there. That used to be the tallest building in Latin America, probably in the 70s or something. But there you go. Well, Paul, uh, while well, you have been globe trotting. Um, Carmen San Diego yes. over there. Things have been happening. Like what? Things. Very important things. I, I know you're going to be very okay. excited about this. The All Xbox right. dashboard <laughs> updated to a higher resolution. By the way, a little bit of um, vagueness on that one, right? Yeah. What, did it say 4K? Uh, no, they didn't. And uh, some of the reports I saw said that they did. Mm-hmm. And that's not what it says. It just says higher resolution. Yeah. I don't have, I, you know, I'm, I'm away, so it's hard for me to look at these things. But I know on my display that I use the Xbox on, when I switch from the dashboard to the game, it goes up in res mm-hmm. and HDR comes on. Yep. But I don't remember the exact resolution of the dashboard. I, I think it's 10, 1080p on the Series X. I don't know. Yeah. Series X or uh, Xbox One. Yeah, there's a couple notable things. First off, this is only for the like alpha insiders, so there's that. Nothing yep. said yet about the Xbox Series S, so this is X only for now. As It's also, Uh-oh. I believe, no HDR, so it's just oh, no. a, a res bump of some sort. We don't quite oh, no. know the whole thing here yet. So, Sorry, it froze on me there. What's that yeah. little message say? Well, it says bad quality. It says, the idiot you're talking to is an idiot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's the building. Really not getting a good. I uh, froze. <laughs> no, it looks fine on this Sorry. end. Oh, now it froze. You actually kind of need to be far away from it to see it. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. Maybe, maybe I think we. I stand did a little st- network switch there. <laughs> maybe we stand still. This is what happens. <laughs> I will. Yeah, I want it, What I want to do is get into a place that looks nice. Mm-hmm. Well, the problem is your head's in the get way. Away from people who are eyeing me suspiciously, <laughs> as they should. Let's see if I can get this up there. Come on, come on, come on. It seems like I'm going too far there, but there we go. It's pretty. All right, I'll stop moving. <laughs> uh, other things, Paul, that have happened. If you're if you're on the mm-hmm. T-Mobiles, not yeah, not this is uh, T-Mobiles had some security issues in the past, uh, but this one sounds mm-hmm. pretty bad. Uh, it was initially kind of like floating out in the ecosystem, but now T-Mobile has officially confirmed that hackers gained access to its system, including uh, social security numbers, driver's license, all that stuff for 100 million people, which means their next uncarrier event, Paul, is going to be lifetime identity protection because this sounds pretty bad. Yeah, it's like they, they should change their name to the Unprivacy Network. Is that what they... Too much? How long you been... <laughs> sitting on that one oh uh, yeah so if you're using t-mobile i would be on the lookout for some official messaging about whether or i don't know i mean at this point like i feel like my data is probably only worth a dollar because it's been leaked so many times although i do not use t-mobile so i guess we're not i'm not impacted by that but i'm definitely my data is out there both of the, both of the networks i use right now are mvnos that use t-mobile in the back end and i assume that has nothing you know, that, there's no worries there this is about the customer databases or whatever mm-hmm but yeah. yeah, I don't think I've ever. I don't know. I guess if you're, T-Mobile account. if you're using T-Mobile, you should. I mean, realistically, everybody should be watching their stuff. Uh, but I don't know if there's 
I don't use a pay for it service. I'm not even going to mention their name, but um, I think everybody should at least be pretty cognizant of what's going on because regardless of T-Mobile, your stuff, you need to be watching it because at this point, it's all. I think the solution is not to use anything electronic or online, you know? Yeah. Let's go back to pen and paper. I'll start sending telegrams. When I do a podcast, I'll just send you a postcard. You can read it. I'll tell you what, you the know? older I get, the more I respect people who just say, nope. And they go to Montana yeah. and buy a plot of land with a cabin and like a propane tank. I always say this. This is the, up. the action hero star. Always drives a Cadillac, like a, a car with a carburetor, mm-hmm. you know, like an old classic Camaro yeah. or a Mustang or something. Yeah. No, I totally get it. The, the type of thing that can be fixed with a wrench and not an OB2 reader. Mm-hmm. Or is it OBD2 yeah. reader? It could be yeah. fixed by a human being without a computer. Exactly. Yeah. Just a little, little more oxygen through that carb. But if you need a little bit more oxygen through your deployments of Windows 10 or potentially even 11 here in the near future, check out this message from our friends over at Smart Deploy. Smart Deploy makes it easy to manage hundreds or thousands of endpoints on any version of Windows anywhere. It's faster and more reliable than Semantic Ghost, MDT, or Acronis Snap Deploy. Head on over to smartdeploy.com slash FRD to get started with your free exclusive software worth over $570. You can also find links somewhere in the description, depending on the device, locale, continent you're on. If you're in Australia, it's probably at the top. If you're in the U.S., it's probably in the bottom somewhere. Just, you know, geographies. I think the best thing that could happen on the show right now would be if someone tried to steal my phone. Oh, I was hoping. And what we captured was me those... bringing down someone like like a lion bringing down a gazelle in the safari. I was hoping a stork would attack you. That would have been. <laughs> Actually, there are some <laughs> like... birds moving in this direction just it's from the just, side this this beak just enters the frame mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just like you're right they went they nip at my earbud or something that looks like food yeah he came into this world and went out just the same way angry yeah yeah exactly screaming and stupid <laughs> being attacked uh this just came out by the way uh sea of thieves yep. i believe had its best month ever in june for really for monthly usage yeah by the by peoples so just keep that in your in your back pocket as microsoft continues to dump more money I, well it's got to be related because they announced that johnny depp stuff right i was trying to see if right. i could find the actual quote here because there is a i don't know what kind of bird this is but it is hopping toward me as we speak on top of a bush which is kind of curious mm-hmm. it was 4.8 million players by the way Wow. Sea of Thieves, June. Yep, that's great. Yeah, it just... It's weird, but that's great. I mean, it's great. Yeah, I, it, the, the remarkable thing is how long this title's been out, and it very clearly has just a very dedicated fan base that keeps coming back and back for more. So Microsoft clearly has a... Not just... I mean, we've known it's oh. done well, but like they've got a sustainable little world gear going on. And what helps that is Microsoft does an amazing job, and I don't think they get credit for this, of supporting certain games, certain uh, first-party games, They've done this with Gears 5. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't cover this because it's, you know, to me it's just not a big, big deal. But for people who play the game, it is. You know, new season. They've added new characters, new maps, you know, you know, all this stuff. I mean, I, I, that kind of ongoing support is is stands in the face of what, say, an Activision or EA does with like a Call of Duty game or whatever, where the game from the past year is supported, but then they move on to a new game. And you don't the old game doesn't get new maps and they don't mm-hmm. get new anything, right? I mean, there's some Warzone stuff happening finally, but you know, this this notion of seasonality for older games, meaning games less you know, more than a year old. I, I, that's I mean, for the ge- people who play those games, that's fantastic. And if I remember correctly, and I might be misremembering a little bit here, but I thought that when Sea of Thieves launched, it launched not to like blockbuster. This is a home run type success. It was just kind of like, eh, it's OK, it's fun. Oh, or whatever. Um, what was that Sony game that was uh, like a space game where the universe was empty kind of thing? What was that called? Skyrim? Not Skyrim. Um, Skyrim. Uh, it was this. It, um, no, it was like a you know science fiction space. Yeah, game. yeah, I know what you're the talking big, about. Uh, no Sky, no Sky no, or something. No Man's Sky. Sky. No Man's Sky. So that, you know, the big complaint about that game at the time was that there was it was like an empty universe. And eventually mm-hmm. they kind of filled it in. And maybe for that game, it might have been a little too late. And I think the complaints for Sea of Thieves when I first launched were kind of similar. It was like, I want to go, sh- you know, swashbuckling or whatever. And there's no one else here. You know, I can't find anything. And now that's no longer the case. And it wasn't the case pretty quickly, I bet. But um, anyway, this is, you know, it's a type of game I'm not like personally interested in, but I'm kind of fascinated 
watching them support it and continue to support it. And mm-hmm. it's, you know, it's, this is a good example of how that E, I call it the EA approach. Um, or I guess it's Activision, sorry. To Call of Duty maybe isn't the right approach, you know? Yeah. Speaking of Not which, they've games. announced Vanguard, which is Call of Duty. Yeah. Coming. War- I, you know, a couple of years ago, probably when they went back to World War II, whenever that was three years ago, probably, I was like, yeah, you know, they've run out of, out of ideas. And at the time, they were like, well, we're going to go to Modern Warfare again after that, and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, oh, great. Same things over and over again. And um, I, personally, uh, I'm not a big fan of the Modern Warfare slash, uh, what's it called, Black Ops Cold War multiplayer, unfortunately. I would love, I, mm-hmm. every time they come up with new maps, I think, my God, I really want to do this, but I, I just can't do it. It's terrible. And so I hope they get, I, I'm, I could, you know, honestly, I, a World War II campaign and maybe some multiplayer be a nice break <laughs> for me yeah but i bet i i don't i don't think this one's going to be super successful i don't think this is a a recipe yeah for the, success you know the big weird thing that's going to happen is they're going to merge all this for because vanguard the game like will be its own thing but warzone is going to they're going to blend all this stuff together so i don't understand how they're going to go back to world yep. war ii but then you can you call it a uav like like what how does that work they didn't right. exist so uh for years and years, I've been saying what we need is a Call of Duty Online. Um, you can make playlists of all the best maps from all the games over the years, going all the way back to Call of Duty 2. And it shouldn't matter. You should be able to mix and match. Like a Call of Duty 2, World War II war, uh, multiplayer map with modern warfare weapons. And, you know, why not? I mean, why not? Do, you could mix and match. That would be such a cool playlist. I want the mm-hmm. weapons from this era. I want the maps from this era. I want a combination of them. I mean, who cares? Um, but... Again, you know, Activision has its own ideas, obviously. But yeah, their own ideas are we forward. make a billion dollars a year on this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. So who am I to complain? But well, I'm a player, I guess. Um, or I was. I mean, I, you know, I'm not. I'm still playing. I'm playing a game that's like two or three years old now, mm-hmm. Black Ops Four. I, I, I can't stand the new games, like the multiplayer things. I can't. I just can't do it. So maybe yeah. I need to adopt or adapt, I guess, to uh, Warzone or something. I don't know. But I bet you know they you know they blow up those islands or those maps uh, every once in a while for the new games and uh, or they start adding. Remember what, uh, they added uh, maps I think when they went to was it Modern Warfare or maybe Black Ops Cold War. But you know you you could have some World War II environments in mm-hmm. that world for sure. I mean it'd be kind of interesting. Mm, yep. Yep. So I don't know what else is on your agenda. I know you got your your brain poked this morning, right? Yeah, and this one went deep, man. I <laughs> I had to blow my nose for like five minutes afterwards. Um, we don't really have much on the schedule today during the day. I I, I wish there was more going on in the normal work world because I come I you know this morning I got up early. There was nothing to write about. Um, I got back yesterday afternoon, whenever it was. There was really nothing to write about, which you know helped me get out that what I use post. But yeah, I could use some normal work stuff, but there's really not a lot going on. Um, we're going to go see one of those Lucha Libre wrestling match things tonight, which should be entertaining. <laughs> um, and I, that's really kind of the last big thing. Yeah. And then, you know, we come home on Thursday. So okay. I don't know. there you go. Well, if you want to bring it on home, you can head on over to our friend Smart Deploy because they've got a great solution, more specifically, a flexible solution for the modern workplace. Make sure to claim your free offer over $570 in value. Go to smartdeploy.com slash FRD, and uh, we will be back tomorrow with Nacho Libre. <laughs> yes. See you.